No snoring, okay? I'm watching you. For the most part, many of us know what good design looks like when we see it. The problem is when we start replicating those designs and then we end up with something embarrassingly amateur. Maybe you are an amateur, but no one needs to know that. It takes a while to be able to identify what separates an amateur design from a professional one. And even then it takes a little bit of testing and trial and error to get it right. But lucky for you, I did all the trial and error for you so you don't have to. These five tips are the ones that I give the most frequently on my design hotline on Instagram. I do this every week and anyone can submit a design problem or a question that I can answer for them. So I hope these tips help you as much as they've helped some other people. First, watch out for scale. This applies to everything, but mostly it applies to your logos and your text. We have a tendency to size our logos about 50% larger than they really need to be because we think our logos are really important and they are. But what's more important is your information and the content that you're providing to your audience. That's what's gonna make people want to find your logo so they can find out where this awesome information came from. The most prevalent defender of a scale is type. I don't know why, but we all have a tendency to scale type about two points larger than it really needs to be. It's okay to scale back a little bit, scale things down, as long as everything is still readable. A great rule of thumb is about 14 to 16 pixels font size in text for digital platforms and about 10 points for text and print. Everything looks bigger in print because once we finally get that sheet of paper in front of us, our eyes pick up so much more detail so everything looks a little larger. Of course, there are times when this does not apply. If you're working with big headlines and you want that text to be bold and chunky, obviously scale it up past 10 to 16 pixels. But if you're working with these big blocks of type, Definitely follow those rules of thumb that I just told you about. Large text tends to look a little juvenile, so definitely scale it down a little bit. Watch out for margins and white space and group like things together. We have this tendency to fill up all of the space that's given to us when we start designing, but I'm here to tell you that is not the case. Have you ever heard that saying, the empty pot bangs the loudest? Did I just make that up? I hope I did it. <laughs> that totally applies here. If you have a big page to work with and not that much text, Resist the urge to space things out to take up all that space. Group similar things together. That's gonna give you this white space at the bottom or on the sides or whatever it is. That's gonna be breathing room instead of feeling like air that got trapped inside your design. Think about it this way. If you and your three friends went out to dinner and you got seated at a table for eight, would you guys like sit at every other chair and take up that entire table? Or would you group together so that you could have a great conversation in a smaller amount of space? The same rule applies to design. And for the same reason, larger margins or white space at the top or bottom or sides of a design looks natural instead of feeling forced. Know when to center align and left align, and then watch out for teetering text. Raise your hand if you center align all of your text because you think it looks a little more designed. If you just raise your hand, I'm gonna be real with you, stop that. Center line text is beautiful and it is preferred, but only when you're working with small headlines or small lines of text. Any more than that, and your text stops looking like a centerpiece and starts looking like a jumble of lines. Big blocks of text are always more readable when they're left aligned, assuming you're all typing and designing in English here, because we read from left to right. So left aligning your text gives your reader a very consistent point to come back to instead of searching for the beginning of each line every time they end a sentence. What your reader is going to end up seeing is just a gray container of text that takes up the full width of the container. If you're worried that left aligning your text and center aligning your headline are going to look imbalanced, don't be. The text that gets left aligned is usually large enough and full enough that the space to the right is negligible. On this note, keep an eye out for teetering text. We have this tendency to put contact information, call outs, calls to actions, and a narrow column at the bottom of flyers, brochures, cards, anything. But it looks a little precarious, doesn't it? To have these wide blocks of text sitting on top of these really skinny ones? This doesn't usually apply to web pages or anything long form, but if you're working with smaller designs like cards or brochures or handouts, try expanding the information that's in that narrow column into two columns and expanding the base of your design so that everything else on top of it has something really nice to sit on top of and everything looks balanced and steady. There you have it! My best tips for refining those designs and going from amateur to a little more pro looking. So get to it, start juicing things up.